all my old school soul food family chef jeffrey back with another video look y'all y'all can see me in my kitchen all right y'all i have a different type video today y'all been asking me uh y'all see i have a lot of red towels speaking of red towels um people say oh you use the same red towel i got 50 of these towels y'all y'all know i love red so that's just a video for another day but anyway today i'm gonna tie this video i'm gonna show you the type of uh cooking utensils pans gadgets that i use on a regular basis y'all um and i'm gonna show y'all how i able to uh execute plan and execute youtube videos and if i'm doing a super bowl party i'm gonna show you how i can do it in such a small space and then we'll show you why i work like this and how i was trained and taught to work like this in a small space being organized clean and efficient so i'm gonna have a close-up because y'all ain't gonna see me in the video i'm gonna do it more close up where y'all can see what i'm doing showing y'all but i just want to come on here and show y'all this is a little workspace this is a little this is the area where i do all my youtube video i could have more space i could use more utilize more space but i do this for specific reasons and i'm gonna tell y'all why as i go through the video i'm trying to keep this video short i got about two or three of these coming up i'm gonna show y'all video how to plate food I'm going to show you how to organize your pantry. I'm going to show you how to organize your fridge, your freezer, all that in the next upcoming months during the holidays here. So anyway, I'm going to step off, get everything ready here, and be back, and I'm going to give you all a close-up of what I use on a regular basis. Not, Of course, I'm not going to show you no special. I have lots of equipment. I'm going to show you what I use on a regular daily, weekly basis. So anyway. Y'all stay tuned. This video is going to be very educational. It's probably one of the most important videos I'll ever put out for y'all. So anyway, we'll be right back. All right, y'all. I am back here. All right. I got my mic on for this. I'm going to be walking off camera, getting things as the video goes along. So I put my mic on so y'all can really hear everything I got to say. Okay. As I say, this is where I do all my uh, videos right here, right in this little space right here. Chef Jeffrey, why are you using such a little space? How you can be able to execute food out of a little space? As y'all know, I've been cooking in a professional kitchen since I was 19 years old. In a huge kitchen with minimum every day 12 chefs, or sometimes you got 25 chefs in a kitchen. 25 chefs in the kitchen, 12 to 25 chefs in the kitchen. You don't you can't use the whole kitchen. Everybody has a special work area. So you must learn how to utilize your space and be organized on the space. If I had a huge kitchen, y'all, I wouldn't know what to do with it. I really wouldn't because I would. it would be wasted space for me if I had a huge, humongous garment. It would be wasted space. Only thing it would be good for, I put all my gadgets and equipment out on it. That's it. I would still work in a certain area. The advantage of that, you got less to clean. Why you want to clutter, clean up your, uh, mess up your whole kitchen? At the end of the day, you got to clean up that whole kitchen. Utilize a little space. Little, It takes a little time and effort for that, and it's less cleanup. Okay, I always work on the cutting board. I like wooden cutting boards. The reason I like wooden cutting boards, it doesn't damage your knife. Some people use plastic. Some people use glass. Majority of the chefs out there like a good wooden cutting board, but I don't want no thin cutting board. You can see how thick this cutting board is. It's a real doable thick cutting board. This cutting board cost me about a hundred bucks. I've had it by five years. I have another one over here, which I ain't gonna bring out, but I have another one over here that uh that I use on the other side of my kitchen also, and it's about this thick. But yeah, I like it because like I say, a good wooden good wooden, get your good wooden cutting board. I do not like glass, I do not like plastic cutting board. Reason I like that, wood gives. Wood gives a little. Plastic doesn't, and hard plastic doesn't, and the glass cutting board is really horrible. It's horrible on your knife. Another thing about knives, and I'm thinking about it, I keep a couple of these on my counter to kind of keep my knife sharp. I'll do another video on really, really sharpening knives. But in this aspect, what I'll do from time to time, I just get these. You can get these on Amazon. You can get them in Walmart, Target, wherever. I go through there like this with my knife. Just do the other side. About three or four times. Then I get a uh the steel right here. 
then I'll go to steel just like this. See? Just like this. Go up like that. Then this knife is good. I don't really have to sharpen this knife really maybe a couple of times a year, just really deep sharpen it. Because number one, I'm using a good cutting board and I'm keeping it sharp with these. And you can use this one here. I got this from a, a going away gift when I left the club. But this one worked just, uh, just as good. Just go through there a couple of times. Then I get this. It's got that real line in the bevel, just like that. See? Then I'll hit it like that. And we good to go. This knife is good for two or three weeks of working. So I just want to let y'all know that. Okay, hold on, y'all. I'll be right back. All right, y'all. I'm back here. Okay, let me get this knife out of the way, and we'll get the knives here a little later. Okay, first thing I'll do, like I say, when I do a video, I have my cutting board already ready and clean. This is the second thing I do. See this over here, y'all? See that water in that sink? If y'all notice in every video, I have soapy water. This doesn't matter what I'm doing. I got hot, soapy water, and I will change it depending on the video. I might change it three or four times during the video. I always have clean, soapy water. That is a very, in the state of Texas, in the kitchen, that is a state law not to have hot, soapy water, but you must have a sanitation liquid and a towel in a bucket next to your station. The health inspector will look at that and will write you up. Every chef in the kitchen, the professional kitchen that's inspected on a, day, on a regular basis, you got to have a sanitation bucket with sanitation fluid. It could be a little bleach water. It could be a soapy water. In my job, we had a, a specific sanitation solution for wiping off. You take it and you're going to, you all, y'all always see me wiping. I have a little bleach in there. What I put in my water, I put some Dawn. Y'all know I love my Dawn. And a, tea, a teaspoon of bleach in my water. And that's what I clean with all the time while I'm working. I'm totally wiping. I'm sanitizing. I'm not only cleaning, I'm sanitizing. The, the, the Dawn cleans it, but the bleach sanitizes it. I'm always cleaning, always wiping. Another thing I'm very adamant about, clean as you go, y'all. Clean as you go. You see me doing this. I'll stop a video in a minute. I say, I'll be back. Y'all hear me say this all the time. I'll be back. I got to clean up. I'll be back. Once my videos are over, y'all, all I got to do is my friends and family, who, neighbors, or whatever, over, we can eat. Ain't no cleaning up. There's nothing in the sink. There's no pots and pans. That's nothing. Clean as you go is very, very simple. When you get through using something, have your sink of water. Rinse it off. Throw it in your sink. Wash it off. Put it in your little drain pan. Throw it in the dishwasher. I'm not a big... I use my dishwasher maybe a couple times a month. I like to hand wash my stuff. It's just me. I'm old school like that. I'll put it in the dishwasher every once in a while to keep the dishwasher running. But I'm a really old school hand washing thing. Okay, let's get moving here because this is going to be a pretty long video. I'm going to try to keep it under 30 minutes. Okay, there's another pet peeve of mine. I guarantee you, you got so many people in your life, in your family. I got them on my channel. Oh, that's not clean. He's not clean. That's not clean. Oh, you can't clean this or whatever. I promise y'all, and if y'all honest to yourself, I'm going to show you the most dirtiest and nastiest thing in your kitchen that you never wash, you never clean. If you're honest to yourself, the average person don't do this. I do it because I know what it is and I know how dangerous it is to you if you don't clean it after every use. And I'm going to show you what it is. It's right here. Can opener. How many people open a can, open what you want, and throw it back in the drawer or whatever? How many of y'all do that? Be honest. How many of y'all do that? This is the most deadliest, dangerous thing in the kitchen if you don't clean it. This stuff carries bacteria. Every time you open the can, what happens? Look at my can open. This looks, this is how it looks all the time. I've had this can opener for six years. Look at it. I always throw it. After I use it a lot, I throw it in the, in the, in the soapy water. In the commercial kitchen, when the health inspector come in your kitchen, the first thing he check after he check the hot water is the can opener in the kitchen. He will take that and write you up. And sometimes if they, you got multiple ones too dirty, they will shut you down. They know this is the most one of the most deadliest things. They say, how that's deadly? Okay, you keep using this, using this. Say if you, uh, most of the stuff you open, you're going to cook. What if you open a can of peaches, a can of something you're not going to cook? When you snap down in that and then pour that out, that bacteria gets on whatever you want to eat. It's very important, y'all, to wash your can. Go look at your can opener right now. 
Stop the video, go in your kitchen, get in your can open and look inside it and see how dirty and nasty it is. It's full of dangerous bacteria, y'all. I'm just a freak. I'm a, I'll tell you, I'm a clean freak. I'm a that goofy, nerdy, cleany guy. I, that's me, especially in the kitchen. I'm very sick because I know how it is. I learned from the commercial kitchen. I use the same thing I do in the commercial kitchen in my home. And every commercial kitchen not like that. That's why I don't eat out a lot. And people always say, oh, you don't do this and don't do that. Oh, he watched this and he don't watch the meat or whatever. You go to commercial kitchen. They don't watch your meats in commercial, a lot of commercial kitchens, y'all. I'm telling you. So that's just a little thing there. Okay. Got that out the way. I should have made notes here. Okay, y'all. I'm going to go with this. If y'all got any questions and whatever that I didn't cover, let me know and I'm going to catch it in the next video. I'm going to try to do these videos every two weeks. Okay. My, my workstation here. I'm going to move y'all over here to my stove. I'm going to show y'all something. 75, 80% of the time throughout the year, I only use two parts. Y'all can do my cooking video. I only use two burners. I do that for two reasons. It's less clean up for me, and I don't need but two. I can, my Super Bowl party, y'all seen this past February, I did over, what was it, 30 items on my buffet. only did use these two burners and my oven for the whole party. I have two burners here too, but I don't use them. Why I need them? If you clean and you organize, you can do, you can feed a lot of people with two burners. What you do, you got to know how. I'm going to do another video on this. What cooks first, what cooks second, what can be warmed up later. That's all you got to do. That's another video for that. But I'm telling y'all, I only use two videos. Y'all can see in my video, you never see me have a whole stove of food. It's unnecessary. And this is another thing about working in the food industry. If you got 20 cooks in the kitchen and everybody on the stove top, you got to know how to utilize a couple of burners. Sometimes you only utilize one. You got to learn how to do that. And that's something I was trained to do, how to use what you got and, and utilize what you have. Okay. Let me show y'all again another thing. These two pots right here, y'all already know. These are two of my favorite pots. Didn't have these growing up for Dutch ovens, y'all. I have six of them. But these are two I use on a regular basis. I have a big one here. I don't know what quartz or gallon it is. All I know, this is a big one. This is a medium one. I got a smaller one. I use these on a regular basis. The reason I love these because you can put stuff in the oven. You can put rice in. Of course, you know you can do smothered pork chops and chicken and oxtail. But you can put rice in this stuff and make rice in it and then put it in the oven. It's so much stuff you can do there. And they so durable, they don't pretty much don't stick unless you don't know how to cook. They don't stick, they don't burn, and they're very, very heavy duty. I absolutely love them. These are probably my favorite, uh, uh, favorite things in the kitchen to use. Okay, moving over to two of my other favorites right here, my cast iron skillets. I've had these about, I've had these two over 20 years. Now I have two more that I've gotten recently. But both of these I've had over 20 years. I bought these at Foley's. Y'all remember Foley's back in the day? I think Foley's turned into Mason. I bought these when Foley's was going out of business. I got this one $5. And this one I think was $10, I think. Maybe this was 5 No, this was, I got them both under $10. So this was, I think, 5 and this was like three fifty. And I got them both for like, that when Foley's was getting rid of everything. And I took advantage. And what I do, y'all, after I use them, Every time I just wash them out with just water, a little soapy water, not much, because you don't want to put, you don't want to soak them in the in the water because they're rust. You see, there's no rust on these. I've had them all this time. There's no rust on them, and I keep them in my oven. I just put them right in my oven, and that's where they go. They dry out right there in the oven. I'll put a little oil on them if I necessary. See how they got a little non-stick surface? I'll put a little oil on them, and I'll keep them in my oven. I got two of them. Of course, I got two of them in my uh, equipment room over there, but most time I just got there. Another thing, y'all probably see back here, I keep my local honey and my ribbon cane syrup back here on the back. Why I do that? Because it stays warm back there. And this is real honey, y'all. This is real honey, and it must stay room temperature or, or, or warm. Uh, don't put it in the refrigerator or crystallize. So I always have honey and ribbon cane syrup on my. So another thing, it's a little sentimental thing. People be asking about these here. Actually, I got two of these. These little shelf pig things. 
I've had these since 1988. 19, I've had these since May 1988. Y'all do the math how many years that is. These was gifted to me as a graduation gift when I graduated culinary school by my mom's best friend. Of course, this lady had been dead over 20 years. She was one of my inspirations. She used to babysit me. Matter of fact, when my mom used to work for her back in the 70s, and she had a greenhouse and she sold candy. And y'all, I used to go in there, eat all her red hots up. My mom used to work for her that by doing the, you know, flowers. She owned the greenhouse of floors. And my mom would go in there, you know, do the flowers and plant the flowers and plate and plate up the flower. Up. You know, put the put take the dirt out and put the flowers back in and plant the flower, however you say it. But I used to go when I was too young to go to school. Uh she had candy that she sold out of there too. Man, red hots. I don't even eat red hots today. I've eaten so many red hots when I was a kid with her. But anyway, that's who gifted me this when I'm she would just saw me since day one. And she knew my love and passion for cooking and how I love to cook. And when I graduated, uh, she was there, sitting front row. Uh when I graduated culinary school. And she gifted me two of these. I got one there, and of course, y'all know I got the other one over there see back in there and she gave me two of them i've had them since then i moved many many times when i move i always package these up very carefully not to break them or damage them so they will have a special place in my heart little things like that probably didn't cost her two dollars y'all probably didn't cost her that they got a little chip on it somehow but other than that yeah it's very sentimental to me but she's very special to me so just want to share that with y'all okay back over here y'all okay now, as I say, I work right here in this little space. I have everything I need right here. Y'all notice in the video, I don't have to open no drawers. I don't. This is on a regular basis, not only for video. When I'm cooking, this is on a regular basis. I had it when I did a Super Bowl party. A uh, friend of mine, my best friend's wife, she said, she was looking at my kitchen. She said, wow, you have everything right there that you need. Yeah, there's no running around in my kitchen. Oh, let me find this. Let me find that. There's no running around in my kitchen. I got everything I need. I got my knives here. I got my whisk. I got my uh, wooden spoon, my tongs, my spatulas. I got my a ladle. I got my spoons with the holes in it. Everything I need, and I keep clean. I clean, of course, y'all know, after every uh, session, I clean. Everything I need. In this here, I'm going to get to this right now. My KitchenAid mixer. I use it as, when I'm not using I use it as a... Uh, uh, uh storage i got a little cup i've had this cup y'all for about over 20 years also the other parts i haven't found i know what the other ones but i have this little cup that i use on a regular basis of course i got my glass cups and measure back there but yeah i use my little kitchen aid mixer thing for uh story so i should have made a, a list of how i'm gonna go through this okay let me show y'all all the equipment that i use not equipment i guess appliances or it's not even appliances Things that I use on a regular basis. Hold on, y'all. Let me move around here. Okay. We're going to go with my pans. Now, these here, let me get these uh, Dutch ovens out the way here so I can move in with this other stuff. Now, these here are Michelangelo pots and pans. This company reached out to me about three years ago and asked me would I share their product. <laughs> these are the best skillets I ever used in my life, y'all. These are the best. These are Michelangelo. You probably can't see the word on the back. These are absolutely amazing pots and pans that I ever had used in my life. And these are the ones I use on a regular basis. If I break the top on here, it'd be good, wouldn't it? Okay. You got the, uh, I got a, like a, a large sauce pan. And then I got a small sauce pan that I use. And then this skillet I use on a regular basis. And they also, be right back. I gotta move over here. I know y'all can still hear me here. Y'all bear with me here. All right, y'all, I'm coming back. Now, they also have what are called egg skillets that I have. Now, go on to michelangelo.com and they have these. They got the small egg skillet, which I love. And I like call this the I only cook eggs in this skillet. This one right here. These are my egg skillets that I use. Of course, I have my other one here. This one here. I've had this egg skillet for about maybe 15, 20 years. 
purpose in kitchen because I only use this in my egg skillet. That's the only thing I use in the egg skillet is a rubber spatula. And these also, so I don't scum them up. That's a chef's uh, pet peeve. If you got a chef's uh, uh, egg skillet, y'all, and uh, and um, use a metal thing in there, they will kick you behind. Now, on my uh, shelf in here, of course, I, I store them like this. But if I didn't have a, a, a place to store these at, y'all, I wouldn't store them like this. Always put a pile in your egg skillet. Always put a towel between it and then put that. You never want to put metal to metal in your egg skillets, y'all. Never. That's a pet peeve. That's a no-no in the food industry. Whenever you store skillets, you don't have a space, put a towel or a paper towel or something in between it so we don't have metal to metal in chipping. Look at these. I've had these by five years, y'all. I've used them on a regular basis. Look at that. No chips, no nothing. Michelangelo makes some excellent excellent products okay let me move this out the way and i'm gonna show y'all my pans that i use oh back to my kitchen aid uh mixer here let me show y'all here i do this only for uh cooking videos but if i'm going to bake something do a lot of baking i don't put the cutting i don't put a, the mixer on my cutting board what i'll do I have a little thing underneath here. I also have this. To, my cutting board doesn't slide. I have this little thing. I got this bed, back and beyond. I'll move this over. This will come out. I'll take that out. Then I got my glass. It'll slip right in there. And that's how I do my cake videos. Very simple, very easy. When I finish my cake video, of course, I clean that bowl out. That goes back. This goes back in here. That goes right back in the corner over there, like it's supposed to. I put this right here. It's not a lot of moving, y'all. It's so simple. I make my kitchen so easy and efficient. And it's not like, that's why I love cooking, because there's not a lot of running and walking around. Okay. While I'm thinking about it, I have my canisters back here. I don't use these in my cooking videos, but I use these when I'm cooking on a regular basis. This one here, I have flour in this one. I keep sugar in this one. I keep yellow corn. I keep my rice in this one. And my yellow corn meal in this one. That's what I keep in these. And people say, how you got these counters? I'm going to think and put a link here. All these are stickers, y'all. You can go to, o uh, to Teesprings, my Teespring store. It's a little link on the YouTube video that you can buy these stickers. Cut them out how you want them and just put them on anything you want. I have a lot of old school tofu stickers and they sell them on. I have a thing. You can go in there and buy them. That's what these are. These are just stickers. Okay. Now, let me show you all the pans that I use. All right. Here we go. The sheet pans, cake pans, however you go. Okay. A different type of cake pans that I will use y'all on a regular basis. Let me find the other two here. All right, Chef Jeffrey, what do you do with them other two pans here? Oh, here we go. Okay. And while I'm making cakes, y'all, I have specifically different type of cake pans. Here's your normal 9 by 13. You make a cake pan. You can use, of course, you can make lasagna with this or whatever. But I use this specifically for cake pan, for cakes. I, have, I use this on a regular basis. When I'm just going to do a regular cake, nothing fancy. They ain't got to take it out and decorate it or nothing. Or just spread the icing on it. I use this 9 by 13 right here. This is a Capilon. I've had this a long time. A lot of this stuff I'm showing y'all, I've had for years. And I'm going to take care of my stuff because I don't want to use it. And I don't loan it out either unless I know somebody going to bring it back. So that's a regular 9 by 13. These here, these come from William Sonoma. I bought these. Uh, uh, I bought these about, what, two or three years ago? I got flour in this one for some reason. Okay, these are my regular nine-inch cake pans. If I'm going to do a, a double layer, and I have two more if I'm going to do a triple layer, but these are one I'm, I use when I have a double layer. Now, I'm going to show you all something here. Now, when I make cakes, especially uh, in these pans, I have parchment paper, y'all. This will last me a year. As a matter of fact, this will last me two years. I buy this parchment paper right here. I buy the big one, 
and the, this one here I use on a regular basis, y'all. That 12 by 16 inch and then a 9 inch uh, 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 round parchment paper. And what I'll do when I do cakes like this, I'll put these right in the bottom of the pan. Of course, I'll spread it too first. And it'll fit right in the bottom of the pan here. See that? I use parchment paper on a regular basis. Now, let me show y'all a little trick that I use also on my tube pan. See this one right here? My tube cake pan that I use on a regular basis for my pound cakes. I like to put with this one, other than these, these flip out good. This one have a tendency to not come out like I want it. So what I'll do, I'll put parchment with that. Now, how you put a parchment in that? I'm going to show you a little trick here. I take this, fold it this way. I fold it again this way. And I'll cut it, take my scissors here. I'll cut it like that. Open it up. Got the hole in there. I just slide it right in there. And of course, when you when you spray it, it'll stick down in there. And that's what you got. Then I can put it in there. Uh, uh, parchment paper right in there. And you actually can do the other ones as this. But you don't want to pretty much do it on these because you want those little dents. You want those little uh, dents in the, in the pound cake as it come out but these are real the main uh three pound cake uh three cake pans that i use the, this one here the two pan then this is a new one that i have right here that i bought about two or three months ago which i love and this is the one i've had whoo this thing here fiberware this is foliage here y'all this 20 year old or more i've made a million cakes in this probably but yeah i've had this for a long time i finally upgraded and got me uh a new one there so yeah so those are my little cake pans that i use on a regular basis okay another thing here sheet pans these come from williams sonoma i use these a lot of times y'all know my little sheet pan with the rack i tell people if all possible invest you go to williams sonoma and get these i don't know if you have it wherever you can get them but what i do when i do a sheet pan with the rack i get my parchment paper my big parchment paper. I'll put this down here like this. I'll put my rack on here like that. There we go. We got my sheet pan with a rack, which I use on a regular basis. With this one here, if I want to put a sheet, uh, uh, sheet, uh, parchment paper in there, I won't even cut it, y'all. All I do is just you can cut it if you want to. I'll just fold it in half here. And voila, I got it right there in that one. I try to use as much as possible use a uh, parchment paper in all my pan. It's for easier to clean up as, as well as uh, uh, your food won't stick as much also. So that's a couple of pans that I use on a regular basis. See what else I got here to show y'all. Also, y'all, let me show you. I told y'all about my KitchenAid mixer. I do have a hand mixer. People always see me using the KitchenAid mixer. I've had this hand mixer. Ooh, I don't know how long I had this thing. I'll use this one on a regular basis too comes in here just like a little thing it has a, a, a little whisk in there it has a little uh beaters it goes right in here the, the plug goes right in there it goes in the outside hold on get in there so get in there so clip back in there voila that's how that's how i store it just like that that way i don't lose my beaters i don't lose my whip i can say y'all i'm very organized in my stuff that i use so yeah, now you do have a I do have a hand mixer that I use on a regular basis. Okay, what else I got sitting over here to show y'all? Okay, my casserole dishes here. I use two two particular kind of casserole dishes. Of course, this is your regular your regular uh three and a half quart casserole dish. Now, depending on how much stuff I have, I got a regular size width, then I have a deeper size that I use. These I use on a regular basis, depending on how much I'm going to do. If I'm going to do lasagna or something, I know it's going to be really, really a lot, I'll use this one. If I know I'm not going to really be a lot or whatever, I'll use this one. Of course, I have different other sizes, y'all, for different things, but I'm just showing y'all stuff that I use on a regular basis in my house for not only videos, but on my personal use. It's what I use on a regular, regular basis. Yeah. 
these two kinds. I think this is a nine by thirteen by. What does it say on here, y'all? What does it say on the back? All it says is three and a half quarts. But I think it's a nine by fourteen, nine by thirteen, nine by fourteen. But the regular size casserole dish. Okay, let's put this to the side here. Let's see if I'm forgetting anything here. Okay, another thing that I do, y'all know that I have uh, my flour and sugar and all that in here in this thing. Let me show you something else that I store. When I do it by, I keep powdered sugar in the container. Y'all know about my salt and pepper. Y'all know I keep salt and pepper on a regular basis. I got brown sugar that I, I bought this thing. Hold on, y'all, just a second here. And this here is flour. When I make big videos, I don't want to use all my personal stuff up. I'll take it out of this here. And of course, you know, you just push it, come off, push it back. I got this at Bed Bath Beyond, these two here. These two here. These two here, I got at Big Lots. This here for the brown sugar. You know how brown sugar gets, uh, if you put it up, it gets hard on you. This won't get hard because it has a, it's specifically designed for brown sugar. What you do every two months or so, I do it every month. You take this little thing out of here. It'll come out, pop out. You soak it in water for an, for about an hour. You soak the little thing in water for an hour, and it soaks up moisture. You stick it right back on there like that, and look. It keeps your brown sugar from caking up. See how that? It never cakes up because you keep just enough moisture in here that the brown sugar doesn't cake up. And that's what I use. I put I always put my, this a whole a pound of brown sugar, this little uh, container. One bag, uh, one one pound of brown sugar. And you just click it, click it down. Anytime I need brown sugar, I don't have to worry about it. It's hard and all caked up and hard. It's good to go. See that? And this here is powder sugar. Of course, you don't need the little thing for that. Then I got the powder sugar that I keep in here on a regular basis. Instead of opening the bag, trying to fold the bag up and all that, I usually keep it in this little little contraption right here. We want to show y'all that. Okay, y'all. Um, I think that's it for this part of the video. I'm going to show y'all one more thing, how I extend my kitchen when I'm really, really in the cooking thing. I have another cutting board. Y'all probably don't see this a lot because I really don't need it a lot of times. That's when I'm doing big time parties. Uh, in my house, I got a lot of cooking and a lot of prepping to do. Y'all say my counter space is limited. I'll extend it. All I do, I got another cutting board over there. I'll put it right here on my sink, and that extends my kitchen right there, y'all. And I still have over here my soapy water right there, and it works absolutely amazing. I very seldom have to do this, but when I'm doing big parties, especially holiday parties, Thanksgiving, Christmas, I got a little bit more prep I need to do. I'll extend my kitchen like this. So, anyway, y'all, I think that's it for this part of the video. I don't see nothing else that I oh, my favorite contraption. Y'all already know my favorite contraption here. Let me grab it here. This here, my instant pot. Y'all seen a lot of video. I've had this instant pot over 12 years. I got it when it first come out. This instant pot cost me about 200 something dollars. That's how much it cost when it first come out. But this is a game changer for me. And now they got them, I guess, even more fancier instant pots now. I don't know how they get do, but this is a regular instant pot. I love it. It cooks food perfectly. It doesn't burn it up. It holds it. You can program it. You, I did it many, many times where I used to work. I'd program it to come on a certain time while I'm at work and cut off a certain time, and it, my food would be hot when I get home. Yeah, I love my instant pots, y'all. I really do love them. Okay, one more thing I see sitting over here. That's why I brought all this stuff out where I can see it. I have different types of mixing bowls. I have glass bowls. And y'all will see these in my videos, my bowls. Now, I think I got these at, I don't know where I bought these at. I have different size mixing bowls that I use. You know, of course, you got the large ones here. You got the large ones here. You got the medium. Depending on what I'm mixing. I love these because they're very durable. You don't break. I have some glass ones too. I, when I used to do videos when I first started, I used to do the glass ones. I said, no, that's just too much work to bring those things out. If you drop them and break them, it's just like, uh-uh. And I use these. I have a lot of them. 
I actually keep them on top of my fridge. They easily accessible. When I need to grab it, they sit right on top of my refrigerator, y'all. And I have this many, and I have another set over there, about, about three or four uh, pieces of them still over there. But y'all see me use these on a regular basis. I don't remember where I bought these from, and I don't even know how much they cost. They don't cost that much, but they're very durable, very heavy duty. I love them. Let me see what they what they call. Oh, Bed Bath and Beyond. That's why I got them, y'all. Bed Bath and Beyond. I should have known, huh? I should have known. So, I guess that's it. But anybody got any comments on something else you want to see? Like I say, I'm gonna do a video how to organize your pantry. What I keep in my pantry on a regular basis. How to organize your freezer. What I keep on my freezer on a regular basis. What I keep in my fridge on a regular basis that I use on a regular basis. Those videos are coming up. But I just want to show you the the uh, the equipment that I use on a regular basis. How I execute a video. Like I say, I set it up just like in every video. Clean. I got everything done. You, of course, y'all know I have all my uh, bowls and uh, dishes like these little things here. These are my measuring bowls. I love these little things here. These little dishes right here, y'all can see. I put my little things in here that I'm gonna measure out. I use these sometimes, and of course, I use these sometimes as well. I don't usually eat out of these. I just use the measure stuff out. Even if I'm not even uh, doing a video, I'll uh, use these little things to kind of remind. Especially if I'm doing something, doing like a Thanksgiving. Uh, 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 break all these bowls. Thanksgiving uh, items for well, Thanksgiving, Christmas, Super Bowl party, stuff like that. I'll bring them out as well. Uh, let me show y'all what I keep in this little thing. I don't think I showed y'all. I got my measuring cup in there. I got this thing. I don't use that much. I do have a little scraper thing to go with the KitchenAid mixer. Of course, the paddle, the dough hook, the whisk. And then my uh, dough cutter here. Also, uh, like I said, I have whipped. I have in my container back there. I have different uh, uh, back there. I have different uh, scoops. I have my spider that I use on a regular basis. Let me show y'all here. Let me get it out back here. I put it back here. I clean it. Y'all know my spider. I have two sizes. <laughs> actually, I don't know what my other one is. I actually have one bigger than this one. I use this on a regular basis, y'all, of course, when I fry fish and things like that. But all these, once a month, even though I wash them when I put them up, once a month, you list at the end of the month, I'll take these things out of here every month, dump everything out, clean the bottom of this, because stuff falls in there, maybe grease or flour or stuff like that, and the ones in the back as well, and I'll clean the whole thing out. I try to do it at the end of the month, the last day of the month. That way I'm always on schedule. Like I said, y'all, I'm just that, that nerdy guy that just loves cleanliness. Because that's what we preach in the commercial kitchen. In the commercial kitchen, we didn't want the health inspector coming in and shutting us down. It makes us all look bad. And if you're a manager of the kitchen, it really makes you look bad. The, 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 the management going to know why you're not keeping the kitchen clean and getting right up by the health department. So. Anyway, I know this video was long, but it's something I need to, to put out here. And like I said, I'm gonna do a video on how to plate food, to, to make the plates balance, the what do's and don'ts when you're plating food, to give it that eye feel. A lot of educational videos I'm gonna try to put out. How to get them out on a Tuesday every every month. So anyway, all right, y'all. If you like this video, please share, please comment, please subscribe, please follow my other social media accounts: Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, Twitch TV, Pinterest. And old school soul food .com. Remember the hashtag 2023 just show some kindness. Old school soul food. Till next time, have a blessed old school soul food day. And I will definitely see y'all in the next video. Y'all have a happy, blessed week. Love y'all. Bye.